Welcome everybody to the 468 Focus. My name is Rolando. I'm the Director of Communications for the Fort McMurray 468 First Nation. I'm here today with Francis Bates, the Director of Fort McMurray First Nation's Health Centre, and Jennifer Splain, the North Zone Area Manager of Population, Public and Indigenous Health. Welcome you two. Thank you. Welcome. Thanks for being here today. So today we're talking about uh, COVID-19 and people's health in general. And so we'll just dive into it. We've got a bunch of questions that we want to get in through. Um, so I guess, first thing, what is the coronavirus? What is COVID-19? Okay, so coronaviruses are well known to us. COVID-19, however, is new and novel, but there are a large uh, family of viruses. Some of them cause respiratory illness in people, ranging from common colds to pneumonias. Uh, COVID-19, though, as I mentioned, though, is a new strain of the virus that has not been previously identified in humans, which means we don't have uh, any immunity to it, and we don't have any vaccine to prevent it, nor treatment uh, that's well known just yet. So that, in a nutshell, is what COVID-19 is. Okay, thanks. So what would be some of the symptoms of, of you know, people when they're starting to feel sick? What are some of the symptoms mm -hmm. that they might experience? Yeah, so there's sort of a, right now an A list and a B list of symptoms, you could say. So on that A list, so these would be the most common symptoms. Uh, they would include fever, cough, uh, sore throat, runny nose, nasal congestion, shortness of breath, difficulty breathing. And then there's this other list of symptoms that as we've learned more about the virus, we've sort of added as a, a B list of symptoms to consider when we're assessing somebody. And those would include things like uh, pain with swallowing, uh, headaches, muscle or joint aches, chills, feeling generally unwell or having some fatigue, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea in some cases, um, you know, maybe even a loss of appetite, loss of sense of smell or taste seems to be uh, ramping up as a common symptom, actually. Uh, and then the other one that um, I'm aware of is pink eye, so conjunctivitis. Um, so when we, we look at the whole clinical picture, we ask questions to kind of obtain uh, responses to all of those types of symptoms. Uh, but in general, there's that A list of, okay, that looks really very much like a coronavirus or COVID-19. And then there's the B list that we just kind of consider when we're trying to build a clinical picture. So if the testing now is free and open to everybody in Alberta, if they experience any of those symptoms, they should be going for testing? Correct. Yeah, that would be symptomatic testing, though. Uh, so, but right now, what's available to all Albertans is asymptomatic testing. So, even if you have none of those symptoms I mentioned and you are interested in being tested for COVID-19, that is an option for all Albertans right now. Uh, and you just go on to the Alberta Health Services website to the self-assessment tool, and you can actually book an online appointment to come and see us and have a throat swap completed. Should I be wearing like protective um, equipment when I go in for testing, whether or not I'm feeling, showing or feeling any symptoms? So if you're symptomatic, you should, um, you know, be wearing some sort of protection if you're coming for testing. But uh, right now, the way we have testing set up in this region is drive by or pull in testing if you have a vehicle and access to a vehicle. And so you pull into a parking space that's uh, designated for you and the nurse comes out to your vehicle fully, uh, you know, gowned in her PPE, including gloves, mask, face shield. Uh, and the test is done just at your vehicle. Uh, so the risk is low to both you in coming in contact with uh, a healthcare worker, but also for the healthcare worker because you're remaining in your vehicle. Um, for asymptomatic swabbing though or testing, um, you're not required to, to wear any PPE to go about your daily business for sure. Um, so, yeah. Thank you. 
can I be sick? Can I have COVID-19 and not show any of these symptoms? Do you want to tackle this one? Yes, you can. You can, be, you can be sick and not show any symptoms at all whatsoever. Be walking around and feel 100% fine, but still be contagious. And that's why people need to keep that six foot distance apart from other people and take all those precautions of washing your hands, doing the 20 seconds, all that stuff. That's just to protect other people because you don't know, you know? So yeah, yeah be mindful of what you're doing when you're out and about and around your family, your friends, that kind of stuff. Thanks, Fran. Uh, Jennifer, do you have anything to add to that? Uh, the only thing I would add is that you know, the asymptomatic transmission, what we understand at this point is very, very low. Uh, so it only makes up for, um, you know, less than 1% of coronavirus or, or COVID-19 cases, the asymptomatic transmission. So it's still a really low rate of transmission if you're asymptomatic. But there's also this concept of pre-symptomatic um, that we're just starting to understand. So meaning your, your onset of illness is is coming. Uh, so it might be, you know, even within six hours, um, you know, I know personally, I've gone to bed at night, felt perfectly fine. I wake up in the morning, and all of a sudden, I'm stuffed up and the cold, it's there. Um, and so there's that concept of pre symptomatic. And what did that look like 12 hours before? Uh, and you could have transmitted the virus. So just like Fran said, be mindful, keep your distance, wash your hands often and well. Um, and if, you know, stay away from high risk people who have other health issues. Yeah. So, so that's great advice. So washing your hands, um, often keeping physically distant from people, especially people who have, who are at risk of other health symptoms. Is there anything else I need to do to protect myself or the other people that I care for? Like still stay home. Like, I mean, even though we're opening stuff up, be careful when you're going out, stay home, you know, that kind of stuff is, is very helpful to stop the spread of the virus. And really avoid touching your face and your nose and your mouth uh, with unwashed hands. That's, uh, some people have really bad habits that are hard to break sometimes. And, and so, you know, nervous habits, I guess, even for some folks where your, your hands are often at your face. Uh, clean and disinfect surfaces, high touch surface areas in your home, your vehicles, in your surroundings often, uh, and cover your cough or cover your sneeze um, well. And um, if you know you're going to be in a place where you can't maintain physical distancing, then consider wearing a face mask to protect yourself and others. Like going to the grocery store or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if I come home and wash my hands and then start touching my face, I'm okay, right? You're safer, uh, for sure, if you've done a really good job of washing your hands and done the 20 seconds, as Fran said. Uh, or you can use alcohol-based hand sanitizer. And same thing, if you're using it well and you're using it properly, then that will minimize your risk, certainly. But if you can start to break those habits of putting your hands to your face, um, that's, that's a good idea too. Yeah. I've mm -hmm. also heard that there's a proper procedure for donning and doffing a, a mask also. Can you explain that? Yeah. Okay. So off the top of my head, um, certainly you want to make sure you always have clean hands before you don your mask. So doing your hand washing or using the alcohol-based sanitizer prior to picking up the mask. Then you'd bring the mask up to your face, make sure it's fit on your face properly. Um, go about your business. Prior to taking off your mask, you want to make sure you hand wash again because you don't want to bring any bugs or germs from your hands to your face or your mask. So hand wash or use the alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Then remove your mask, discard it immediately in a garbage can, followed by a final round of hand washing or hand sanitizer because anything that might have been on your mask that um, you know could contaminate your hands will be there. So you want to leave with those clean hands without your mask. And we see a lot of people using uh, reusable masks. Like, mm -hmm. so those are, use them once, wash them, use them before you use them again. Right. So when you're using the cloth masks or, or homemade masks, it's really important to consider um, 
that you're going to use it continuously when you're out for one sort of episode. So you don't want to be putting it on and putting it off. I see lots of people in their vehicles, you know, they go in, they put their mask on before they go into a store, they go into the store, they do their shopping, they come back, they take their mask off, sit it in their car, then they go right back and use that same mask at the gas station or at the next stop they make. Um, and so one of the recommendations is that individuals have at least three to four masks that you can sort of circulate so that you're always putting on a clean mask. And then, you know, maybe every evening or however often as a appropriate you're washing those masks so that they're clean for the next um the next day uh fran i guess here's a question for you about the, specifically about the nation if i if i were to get sick with covid19 and i live on the nation on the reserve uh what help is there or what kind of assistance is there or how should i get prepared um if if i find out if i start to feel sick or if i find out that i've tested positive for covid19 how is the nation there to support me? Well, if you've tested positive, uh, you should let us know so that right away we can start taking steps to make sure you're self-isolating, that we've, we've got food prepared for you. Um, our DEM Cindy has um, the, the trailer set up. Also, we're going to have um, nursing available to come out and check on you a couple times a day, check your temperature, make sure you're doing well with the COVID, uh, make sure there's no alarming issues happening where you're suddenly becoming very ill, having trouble breathing, and if you are, of course, we're going to handle it by calling 911, getting an ambulance out there, that kind of thing. But in, we would need to make sure that you're not spreading the virus as well. So if you're in a home and you don't have your own bathroom and your own space where you can isolate, that's why we put the uh, trailers outside the band office so that you can either live there and have your own space and we can make sure that you're not spreading it to your own family, your children, this kind of thing, right? So, and then we'll have our nursing go check on you a few times a day. Um, we'll make sure you have a, a phone to use while you're there if you need help. Uh, delivering, we'll be delivering of food, um, medications if needed, that kind of thing. So yeah, we're actually very, very prepared for people if they do get it. Um, the thing is, if we get a massive outbreak, then I don't know if we can be prepared for that. Like the, those trailers only hold so many people, right? So that's why everybody needs to stay safe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. So we're hearing physical distancing, we're hearing so self-isolation or so like social distancing a lot. Can somebody explain to me the difference between physical distancing, social distancing, and self-isolation? Physical distancing and social distancing are interchangeably used, I would say. Uh, so physical distancing involves taking steps to limit the number of people you come in close contact with. It just helps reduce you getting sick or preventing the spread of the virus to others. It's not the same as self-isolation. So you don't need to remain indoors, but you do need to avoid being in close contact with people. So the physical distancing, you're keeping that six feet from others, uh, which is hard for people to sort of imagine sometimes I use a couple examples so it's like um, a bicycle apart from your the next person or uh, two hockey sticks or, or a large adult size hockey stick is another way I like to describe it to people who aren't great with metrics like me um, so you're going to try and maintain those distances when you're out doing your groceries or, or doing your other trips for essential needs. You limit the number of times you leave your home for errands. That's part of that social slash physical distancing. Try and shop at less busy times is another, um, you know, piece to uh, physical distancing. Order groceries online, have them delivered when possible. Uh, go for a walk in your neighborhood and, and keep that hockey stick rule or bicycle rule apart from others. Avoid overcrowding uh, in areas. Avoid elevators. Take the stairs. It's, it's good for you if you can. And then just follow all the provincial recommendations on mass gatherings, which are constantly changing right now as we get into the phase two and the relaunch. And then after you've touched anything in any of those areas where you've, you know, you've had to be, make sure you've got your hand sanitizer or access to hand washing. Self-isolation, uh, in contrast, means that you are staying home, basically. You're uh, isolated from others. 
there's a few scenarios so um, where you might be required to self-isolate. Uh, Albertans with symptoms or anybody who's tested positive for COVID-19 are legally required to self-isolate for a minimum of 10 days. If you have a cough, fever, um, shortness of breath, runny nose, sore throat, that is not related to pre-existing illness or a health condition. The mandatory isolation period is 10 days from the start of symptoms or until symptoms resolve, whichever takes longer. Uh, so there's, there's often some conversation that has to happen to establish those rules for individuals. Uh, any Albertan who's tested negative for known exposure to COVID-19, um, but are had symptoms at some point are required to self-isolate for 14 days because that's how long we believe the potential period is for uh, the infection to develop. So we just want to make sure that it doesn't develop. If you tested negative and you had no known exposure to the virus, you're not legally required to isolate. However, it's important to stay home until your symptoms resolve so that you don't infect others. And that's back to that concept of maybe pre-symptomatic or, you know, maybe you had a day in there where you forgot that you had a bit of a runny nose and in fact you had the virus, but we're not picking it up in a test any longer. Um, so, you know, there's lots of different, I think, examples of when we would recommend somebody be in self-isolation. So it's just really important to reach out to Alberta Health Services, let us know how you're feeling or ask us your questions so that we can, you know, walk you through the different possibilities and make sure the recommendations we provide you are, are as accurate as possible and will protect you and the others around you as much as possible. There's such subtle differences between each case. It's really hard to to describe, to be honest, yeah. Thanks for that, Jen. Um, Fran, let's assume I'm not symptomatic, let that, that I don't have any symptoms, but I still wanna go visit my family, my friends, can I do that? If you have no symptoms and you're healthy and they are healthy, you can visit but still keep social distancing and also keep in mind people who have uh, immune compromised systems like where they they don't feel you know they can catch something easily and you know there this virus will really harm them if they catch it right like the elderly um the immune compromised anybody mm -hmm. you know keep, keep be mindful in that when you're when you're out and about and i mean i know how hard it is i, I miss my family too i want to see them too you know what i mean so yes just stay stay your six feet apart like jen said the bicycle the hockey stick distance away if I come over, can we sit on the patio? Like that kind of stuff. It's just, it's just taking all the precautions to making sure you're not getting it, you're not giving it. Wash your hands, you know, wear your mask to protect others. Uh, make sure you're well, they're well. This kind of stuff goes yeah. a long way. Okay, thank you. So this is, we're four months into, you know, first, I think, shutting down and like mid-March and it's since, you know, COVID really kind of took a hold on, on certainly Canada and North America. People are bound to be stressed, sad, anxious, going through a lot of different kind of stuff, right? Um, and I think we all at varying degrees are feeling something. We're not feeling 100%. Where can I go if I if I feeling that some of those things, if I feel like I need help or if I know somebody else who needs some help? with your own mental health. Um, Fran, or, or let's start with you, Fran, if you want to think of something and Jennifer. Well, you, you can call the health center. We have, um, you know, Nancy Cree there. We have Jeff. We have Jennifer Vanderroot. We have myself. You can start there if you like. If you don't want to go there, you can go to Alberta Health Services. Um, there's programs in Fort McMurray that can help you. Uh, if you need direction, come see us. We have so many numbers and contacts that will that we work with every day that can help that. And it is stressful and it is hard. Like even I, I feel it some days, I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, I'm feeling stressed, I'm feeling overwhelmed and I can't do anything. And I go go grocery shopping, I'm having an anxiety attack. And oh, I forgot to, to wash my hands when I got home. I just grabbed my groceries and 
you know, I feel all that too. Like everybody's going through it and everybody's feeling it. So you're not alone. We're all in this together. You just kind of got to get through your day. And if you do need help, yes, phone. Like there's a list of numbers on the Fort Murray First Nation page as well. So people can go to that. But they're also, they can just call the health center and we can assist in getting some, some numbers. What's the number for the health center again? It's 780-334-2443. Thank you. Um, Jennifer, is there anything that you would add to that in terms of broader uh, Alberta mm -hmm. resources? Yeah, so there's a few that come to mind. Um, certainly 811, so that's HealthLink. So you can reach out to HealthLink 24-7 for, for support. Uh, one of the ones that I think would be important for this community is the Hope for Wellness Helpline. It's an Indigenous-focused toll-free helpline. The number uh, is one 855 two four two three three one zero and phone counseling is available there in Cree, Ojibwe and Inuktitut so that might help uh, some of the community members. Uh, for the younger audience there's the kids help phone so 1-800-668-6868 and that offers professional counseling, uh, information, support services, referrals to other programs uh, we have uh, in Alberta the Alberta's Addiction Helpline, and that's available toll-free and provides confidential support for alcohol, tobacco, and, and other drug and problem gambling. So that number is 1-866-332-2322. There's Text for Hope. Um, so if you know, individuals uh, like to use some of the social media platforms. This is a free daily text messaging service that just helps um, people identify and adjust to, the, to negative thoughts, feelings, behaviors around the pandemic. Uh, it sends out sort of hopeful messages every day, things you can kind of grab onto that provoke some positive thought and positive thinking. And so if that's of interest, you can subscribe to uh, via text. It's COVID-19 HOPE, and it's 393939. Certainly, you can call us at Public Health, too, in Fort McMurray at any time. Uh, we have a nurse on call during regular business hours. That number is 780-791-6297. And... Uh, and as Fran mentioned, your health center in your community is really well connected to us as well. And we can get you access to any of these resources at any time, too. Great. Well, thank you very much, Jennifer and Fran. Um, is there anything, any last messages that either one of you want to uh, leave us with before we sign off? Yeah, I think just, you know, be safe, wash your hands well, wash them often, practice the respiratory etiquette. Keep up the great work. Uh, I think, you know, in your community in particular, you've done a great job of keeping the virus at bay. And, um, you know, as we learn and, and go through this together, I think we'll, we'll, you know, get better and better and we'll be prepared for, you know, a second wave if that comes. And uh, we just really appreciate all the support from uh, Fort McMurray First Nation. And we look forward to continuing to work together. Great. Thank you, Jennifer. Fran, anything from you? Actually, I wanted to say something because um, I just want to acknowledge Chief Ron Kircher because this is our third pandemic he's taken us through and it's just, it's amazing the work he's done. Like the, you know, the way he gets his crew together and he's like, okay, this has to get done. I mean, he phones me all the time and he's like, I'm worried about this. Like, and he really does care about the community and he's really doing his very best. And this is our third time round now. Like we had the flood, the fire. Now this, this virus and I'm just like, I just, I think it's great that he's there and, and has taken us through three pandemics. It's pretty good. So I just wanted to say thanks to the nation and the leaders and all the people that do everything to keep it a nice, nice place to live, a good home. Yeah. And there's certainly been a lot of, uh, a lot of cohesiveness amongst absolutely chief and council have been doing great in terms of giving um, a lot of their passion and their efforts to make sure things are happening, but uh, also 
a lot of the leaders also in, in the nation are doing some great work also. Well, thank you very much, both of you, for your time today. I really appreciate it. Once again, uh, on the line with us, we have Francis Bates, who is our director of Fort Murray First Nations Health Center, and Jennifer Splain, the North Area Manager of Population, Public, and Indigenous Health. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.